Consider the induction of Dick Vermeil into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's a culmination of a magnificent football coaching career. And uh, obviously I felt for a long time that Dick Vermeil was more than deserving of this. There won't be a better ambassador to the Pro Football Hall of Fame than Dick Vermeil. I am honored and privileged to present my longtime friend and colleague, Dick Vermeil for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Dick. You bet Napa College, you bet UCLA, thank you. Thank you very much. Carl Peterson, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for 48 years of consistent, loyal, personal, professional, and financial support. I love you, buddy, and you've been a main, main, main key to cog in my life for a long time. The other person was John Shira. Who knows John Shira anymore? Well, if you played in the back then, you would have known him. John Shira was the most valuable player in the Rose Bowl. January 1st, 1976, when we beat the number one team in the country, Ohio State, Woody Hayes. Major upset. The reason I'm here today is because how well John Shira played that day. Not because how bright I was as a football coach. He played lights out. I was fortunate enough to bring him back later, make a safety out of him because I needed his, I needed his support. I needed him covered my back. So Johnny, thank you. Thank you very much. Hall of Fame class of 22. What an honor. What an honor to share this stage, this honor with you. Unbelievable. Bill McPherson, love you, Mr. Bryant. Your coach, he worked for me at UCLA and the Philadelphia. He loved you. He predicted you would be here. But thank you guys for sharing the 2022 class. Thank you, Hall of Famers. Thank you, Hall of Famers. There's a couple of guys in here I'm not too excited about. Cliff Harris, Keith Crefley is out there somewhere looking for you, okay? Okay. But anyway, thank you. You know, I've been fortunate in my career to have the opportunity to coach 10 Hall of Fame football players as a head coach, five Hall of Fame players as an assistant coach, coach and work with three NFL Hall of Fame coaches in George Allen, okay, in George Allen, in Sid Gilman, in Sid Gilman, and the great Bill Walsh. Unbelievable. I've had the opportunity to coach against 12 head football coaches that are already in the Hall of Fame. Many have kicked my butt many, many times. But I'm so gracious because they provided me an example and an opportunity to learn from them. I learned from my players. Many people said to me, coach, you impact players. It's the other way around. Players impact me. Players impact me. Last night, sitting up behind me was Mike Jones. If Mike Jones doesn't make the tackle on the last play of the Super Bowl 34, I'm not here today. Players win games. It's our job to prepare them to get them ready to win games and share relationships and, and work ethics and everything else with them. So, God, I, I will 
forever be in debt. I will be forever in debt to all you people. And to be selected now as the 28th NFL head coach to be put in this position to accept a Hall of Fame honor as a football coach is an expectation I never, ever held high in my life at any time. Two years ago, I started hearing rumors. And I said, well, maybe sometimes it'll happen. I don't know. But, but you know, I, I just never put myself in the same category of those other 27 coaches. No. So I am deeply in debt to so many contributors to my career. In fact, I'm so in debt to so many people. In the time that they allotted me to speak, I won't be able to cover all the bases adequately. But I know this, the first thank you has to go to Sal Palantonio, who presented me to the voting committee. Thank you, Sal. You obviously did an unbelievable job because the voters believed you. And I appreciate that. I do very much. Thank you to the advocates. I have advocates, owners, NFL head coaches, college coaches, NFL players, assistant coaches, Hall of Famers, Hillsdale High School kids. That Ray Dittinger sitting out there. He's got the back, Sal Palantoni. So, and I appreciate it very much, Sal. You must have done a hell of a job to put me up here today. Thank you. Thank you, Bill Wood. Bill Wood, my Calistoga High School, 1,800 people in town, 20 kids on our team. A high school football coach that initiated my thinking about wanting to become a high school football coach. Thank you, Napa College, Coach Paul Lathrop, Glenda Bose, for providing me an opportunity to initiate my growth, both academically and athletically, and then sending me on to San Jose State as a walk-on. Thank you, Dr. Robert Bronson, Bob Titchnell, my two San Jose State football coaches, for seeing talent in me I didn't see in myself. Thank you, Hillsdale High School, Frank Collin, John Gilmer, where's John? My assistant coach, he was my one assistant. 90 years old, drove across the United States to be here. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to the players on those teams. Oh, my gosh. Where's my Hillsdale guys? Now, remember, here they are. I still call them kids. They're in their high 70s today, OK? <laughs> My two starting guards, my offensive center, the quarterback and running back, and the captain of the team is sitting back there from Hillsdale Knights. Guys, give me a growl. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you for being here. What, what an honor. Yeah. Thank you, George Allen. George Allen for providing me my first opportunity to coach in the National Football League. As the first special teams coach ever hired. Can you imagine of being around George Allen and the kind of staff he had? By you, Ted Marshall Broda, Howard Schnellerberger, you know, unbelievable. George Allen, 71% career winning record, only two coaches in the history of the league have more. Madden, okay, and the great Lombardi, and that's only by 1%. Imagine the impact a man like George Allen could make on a young special teams coach. Thank you, Tommy Prothro, for bringing me back. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Tommy Prothro, for bringing me to UCLA to be your offensive coordinator, okay? And then taking me back to the Rams to run your offense in 1971 and 72. I probably got him fired. I probably got him fired. He was a great football coach, but he thought I had enough experience to be his coordinator coming out of college and then do it in the NFL. And thank heavens for Roman Gabriel. He covered me. I learned so much from Roman Gabriel. Where's his son? Roman Jr., stand up. Where are you? Thank you for representing your dad. Roman couldn't come. Health reasons. Thank you for being here. But I learned so much from a lot of those players. And I hired one of them, Kenny Eyman. I told him, Kenny, when you get out of playing, and I, if I ever get a head coaching job, I'm bringing you with me. Appreciate Tom Mack, where are you, Tommy? You were on that team. You helped me a lot as well. You remember how, how little I knew. Don't you? Don't say yes. Thank you, Chuck Knox, for keeping me on the RAN staff to coach your running backs and special teams when you took over as head coach in 1973. Chuck Knox had a great way of communicating with people. He really did. He had great, great expressions and intensity. When he got mad, 
he, uh, it's, ama uh, it's amazing how he can light up a meeting room. So thank you, Chuck Knox and Shirley. I know you're watching today. I hope you're joining my Sauvignon Blanc. Thank you, J.D. Morgan, UCLA Athletic Director, for bringing me back to UCLA as your head coach in 1974. Thank you, Bruin players and staff. You just saw one of them. You just saw one. Thank you for becoming a great football team the second year and upsetting the mighty Ohio State Buckeyes. If you don't do that, the ownership from the Philadelphia Eagles don't get on a plane right after the game, so help me God, it's the truth, and fly to Southern California, take up hotel rooms in the Beverly Hills, and start calling me. They spent four days recruiting me to come and coach their football team in Philadelphia. If my football team in UCLA and my coaching staff doesn't do the, as good a job as they did then, I'm not standing here today. Thank you, Leonard Toast, owner, not here, passed away many years. Thank you, Jimmy Murray, general manager, not here for health reasons. His son, Jimmy, where are you, Jimmy? Where's young Jimmy? Thank you for covering for your dad, buddy. Your dad knows how I feel about him, and let's hope he gets healthy enough to do these hit these things himself one day in ahead of us. Guy, you know, my coaching staff in Philadelphia, there's only three of them left, okay? Lynn Stiles is here. Lynn, where are you? Lynn is here. God bless you. Lynn Stiles was with me at UCLA, Philadelphia, St. Louis Rams, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Thank you, Lynn Stiles. God bless you. Jerry Wamper is not here. Carl Peterson was the other assistant coach on that staff. Thank you, John Wooden. I took every opportunity I had to spend time with John Wooden. Yes, he's coaching basketball, but when you watch him practice, the intensity and the discipline and the structure was there of a great football practice and a great football coach. And it was so exciting. I learned so much from a, a, a philosophy he implanted in me in conversation. I. I Think about it all the time. One time I was complaining about the players we lost in recruiting. He said, sit down. I sit down. When John Wooden says, sit down, you sit down. I sit down. He said, now listen, coach. Don't worry about those players you don't have. Just make sure you do a great job of, of making those who you have the best they could possibly be. You know, and I've operated under that simple philosophy the rest of my coaching. It is so simple. If someone used common sense, it made that statement. It, it, it is so true, so true. So, gosh darn it. Thank you, John Wood. Thank you, ABC, CBS, for bringing me into broadcasting when I wasn't smart enough to listen to people around me and telling me, you better slow down. You can't keep doing what you're doing. I was so insecure. I could hear, but I wouldn't listen. I paid the price for it. Thank you, Carol for saying it's time to get your butt out of there. And I did. But I'll tell you, I learned so much in broadcasting. Can you imagine have free access to a, to a, a Don Shula practice meeting room? Tom Cochran, one of the finest football coaches ever coach a game. Tom Osborne, all the, and, and, and to be there and listen to them talk, watch your coaches coach, watch them put practice, look at their game film. Oh, every week I learned something more for 14 years. Thank you to the broadcasters that sat next to me. Two of them are here. Gary Bender, where are you, Gary? Thank you. Thank you for getting here. Thank you, Big Bella. Thank you. Roger Twibel, where are you, Roger? Thank you. We did a lot of games together and had a lot of fun. Brent Musburger could not be here, but he knows I love him, and I know he knows how much he contributed to this opportunity for me to be here. Thank you, Georgia Frontier. John Shaw and Jay Sigmund. Where's John Shaw? John Shaw, the president. Stand up, John. Jay Sigmund, where are you? Stand up, Jay. Stand up. I want to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine a president of an NFL football team today, today, hiring somebody that hadn't coached in 14 years? You talk about guts. John Shaw, I will forever be in debt for the decision you made. It was just unbelievable. Thank you to my personnel department, led by Charlie Army and John Becker. Charlie couldn't be here today. He's got some illness in the family. But Charlie, you know how I feel about you. You provided me and my staff with so many good football players. Orlando Bates, 
all these guys, London, I mean so many, Tory Holt sitting out there who will be a Hall of Famer soon. They did an unbelievable. My coaching staff, they, my offense, you know, I'm giving credit all the time for being, oh, no. what was it, the fastest, the greatest show on turf? Mike Burns, stand up. Stand up, Mike Burns. Stand up. There's the, there's the orchestrator of the greatest show on turf right there. And the rest of the staff, Al Saunders, where are you, Al? All you guys. My Kansas City staff, stand up. Be recognized. These are the guys. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much. I was fortunate enough and smart enough to bring Al with me when I went to Kansas City. Great football coach, great human being. There's other coaches out there as well. They're, they're unbelievable. I, I know this. Kevin Warren's out there. No, he president runs the Big Ten, guys. He runs the Big Ten. Kevin, thank you for keeping my guys out of trouble most of the time. Okay, most of the time. All right. Well, you know, there are other guys that on that staff. You haven't heard me mention Wilbert Montgomery yet. Wilbert played for me and was responsible for so much of the success we had in Philadelphia. I made a coach out of him when I went back into coaching. Wilbert, stand up. Wilbert Montgomery. Thank you, buddy. You know I love you. The players used to call him Wilbert Vermeil. Okay, so they knew I loved him. John Bunning is here. John both played for me and coached for me. John, where are you, buddy? Thank you. Thank you for being. I don't know if you got through that party you guys put on last night or not. Uh, and I hope you did. But there's a whole group of There they are. Thank you, John. Thank you, all you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, St. Louis fans. St. Louis Ram fans. Thank you. You proved you were more than just a baseball fan. You really did. Well, you got involved with our team. Thank you, Philadelphia Eagle fans. You know, I feel so close to you guys. I, I feel that I know each one of you personally. So thank you for being here as fans. Thank you, you fans at home that accept me as part of your community. Unbelievable. Thank you, Lamar Hunt and Norma. What the finest couple I think I've ever met in pro football. Unbelievable. Clark Hunt and Tavia son and daughter-in-law came to be here last night and to see me this morning. Thank you for making that effort. Along with them came Andy Reid and Tammy, head coach, in training camp, left training camp, flew here to say congratulations to me personally last night. I have never had in my coaching career a better display of respect for someone else in the profession that you were in than what Andy Reid did for me last night. It will always touch me. Thank you, Andy and Tammy. Okay, that was unbelievable. It just, it just, it just, it just Alan Wright, my, my uh, equipment guy was with him as well. God darn it, you know, I, I just wish I had time to go through every one of them. Thank you, coaching staff. You know, my chief coaching staff was unbelievable. Mark, Mike Solari. Keith Rowan, as like Al Saunders ran the offense. You know, someday they're going to start putting assistant coaches in the Hall of Fame. Mike Morris and Al Saunders will be in those classes. Outstanding. Not that the other coaches aren't of the same caliber, but thank you guys. They're wonderful guys. Frank Gans Sr. coached with me at the Rams. Probably the most complete football coach I ever worked with in every category of coaching. He is long gone, but God, did we lose a great person and a great coach. Unfortunately, his son, Frank Gans Jr., was with us in Kansas City. I was so fortunate to have the opportunity to work with three great owners, three great administrative staff, three great personal departments, and most importantly, three outstanding coaching staff and players. Persons, I know, I just, that's amazing. Persons uh, that... You know, that just, they put everything else aside and put every responsibility they had in front of them and attacked it with great admiration and great intensity and, and concentration. What contributors? I'm very sorry to say there are several coaches and now some players that have passed on that I can't say thank you personally to. But I know many of their families are listening, maybe watching on television. Thank you for sharing your husband. Thank you for sharing your dad. 
with me and making a contribution to me being to me being standing or having the opportunity to stand here today. Unbelievable, unbelievable man. Just I, I just well, I I saved my family for last because I knew if I started with them first, I wouldn't get to the rest of it. Okay. Thank you, Louie and Alice Vermeil and Calistoga. You talk about original, good old-fashioned American people. My mother had the compassion of an angel. My dad was tough. He taught me hard work wasn't a form of punishment. He always said, and he loved football, if you live your life the way you learn to play football, everything will work out just fine for you. And I think most of us agree. Thank you, Louie and Alice Vermeil. Thank you, Sister Laura Vermeil Jamona. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Al Vermeil. He's got six world champions, seven world championships rings himself. Six of them NBA Chicago Bears strength coach. One with Bill Walsh, Super Bowl coach. Hell, they even named a high school football practice field after him. Congratulations, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Stanley Vermeil. He couldn't be here today for health reasons. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, family, for covering for me and adding so much depth to my life when I was off coaching football teams and you were covering for my family, family responsibilities with mom and dad. You notice I didn't get into talking about a lot of other things that would make me cry, okay? But when I talk about Carol Vermeil, it ain't gonna work. Okay. I say this, look at, look at the players, look at the coaches, look at I hope people see this. Carol Vermeil as a football coach has no equal. Never has, never will. Look at them, they know. They know, these guys up here know. She's had most of them. She's counseled people in marriage problems. She's done it all. So thank you, Carol. I will all, 66 years. The only thing I ever put on my body more important than this jacket was the red and wing she gave me 66 years ago. Thank you. The grandchildren, children, Rick, Dave, Nancy, their spouses, my 11 grandchildren and two great grandchildren, God bless you, and, and you, you know what I'm saying about Nanny, you know what I'm saying about Carol, your, your mother, your grandmother, she has no equal, she has no equal, and uh, you know, she doesn't like compliments, but everyone that's ever worked with me and coached with me and played for me know that what I'm saying is true. In closing, let me say I will forever be appreciative and grateful for this honor. And about the only thing that will make me feel a little better about me standing here as the 28th NFL Hall of Fame football coach is when I see Mike Holmgren come in, when I see Dan Reeves come in, when I see Marty Schottenheimer come in, when I see Mike Shanahan come in, when I see Tom Kaufman come in, when I see George Seifert come in, when I see Don Coriel come in. Because believe me, if I deserve it, so do they. Ladies and gentlemen, Kansas City Chief people, Kansas City fans, the Kansas City people are the most passionate and compassionate combination of fans I've ever been around. They were so, so great to represent, and, and Lamar and all you people, and, and Carl who brought me there. Thank all of you. Thank the Hall of Famers here. I see Tony sitting there, Mr. Rome sitting right here. You know how much smarter I got when uh, Marshall Falk showed up in, in, in St. Louis? It's amazing how much better coach I became. But anyway, thank all you Hall of Famers. Harold Carmichael, where are you, buddy? Hey, we're hooked at the hip. Kurt Warner, his story is true. Where would I be without Kurt Warner? I wouldn't be standing here. So, gosh, Thank you for the contributions all of you guys made. Isaac Bruce, Isaac Bruce, he's in here already. Thank you for the contributions you made to my career and all the rest of you. God bless you.